Hi everyone, Jerry Guionis here. Really excited to announce the release of the Omega Reflector. It's been a while in the making, but it's finally been released. And you might ask, what is the Omega Reflector and how does it differ to other ones on the market? Quite simply, it is the world's first 10 in one shoot through reflector. It really is to create beautiful, gorgeous beauty lighting. It really combines the traditional nature of a reflector with a luxury of a beauty dish and a ring flash. So I wanna walk through some examples and actually show you exactly why I created it and what it's used for. So let me show you an example here. This is actually a photograph, a behind the scenes photograph of Melissa um, facing a wall where the sun is illuminating it. So for years now, since the beginning of my career, 21 years ago, I, as everyone does, I guess, everyone uses you know, walls as natural reflectors. Perhaps a, a slightly different way or a subtly different way that I use uh, walls is that I often get my subjects, in this case, Melissa here, uh, my wife, I got her close to that wall, so the sunlight is giving her a beautiful back and hair light. It's bouncing off the wall and then giving her this beautiful, soft, gorgeous beauty lighting from the front. So that's the behind the scenes. Now, just so you know, I was actually standing around about here shooting this way, and this is the result that I get. Okay, so you can see how the lighting is beautifully soft, it's less descriptive, um, and it's just, it somewhat emulates shooting through a softbox. Quite simply it is. We've created that with the sun, but we've given two qualities of light, or two directions, I guess, because you've got the hair in the back light, and then you've got the front light. Like I said, less descriptive, beautiful lighting, very flattering, and you can't see much texture in the skin and so on and so forth. But there is a, a shadow on the face. Now, typically, sort of beauty lighting, you want to get rid of all those shadows because it's like filling in the, uh, the Grand Canyon of crevices on your face and basically you don't see any texture or a little texture. So, because I've been doing this for all these years, I thought, look, what happens when you don't have a wall and you want that front light and you don't want any kind of, I guess, evidence of a direction? I want soft beauty lighting, less descriptive, beautiful catch lights in the eyes, what do I do? So I embarked on a journey to, to create a really easy way of creating this kind of lighting and very affordably. So I, I did some tests. I got various reflectors and I, I cut them out and I, I had some fun with it. I've gone through like dozens of reflectors to work out the right hole size, the ratio, the distance between the end of the hole and the end of the reflector. And then finally, uh, this was born. So what I've done here is you can, as you'd appreciate, the sunlight is hitting the back of her, hitting the reflector, and now I have this perfect position to shoot through and then get this kind of result. So guys, this shot that you're seeing right in front of you of my wife, Melissa, was the very first test that I did of the Omega uh, reflector, I guess the, the, the birth of it. And when I saw this shot come out of my camera with very little shadow, beautiful catch lights in the eyes, beautiful hair and rim light, I'm thinking, you know what, I think this is worth exploring in a, in a lot more detail. The problem was with the reflectors that I tested, I cut the holes out of my existing reflectors. First of all, I ruined my reflector, so I couldn't use it as a normal reflector again, and then it started fraying on me, and then I, I struggled with the, the right proportion of the hole and the distance between the edge of the hole and the edge of the reflector and all those different things, and then finally it... Uh, I found the, the results. Now, as you may or may not know, I actually invented the ice light and, and it's been made in conjunction with Westcott, uh, a great company that's uh, really the leaders in continuous lighting, in my humble opinion, a couple of years ago. And I teamed up with them again to create the Omega Reflector. So I want to talk to you about exactly what it is. So I don't know about you guys, but I've actually, uh, for years now, I've found it very difficult to get the reflector out of my shot. You know, you know when you've got your assistant or you're holding a light stand and you always want the position of where the reflector is. And so here now the hole offers a perfect opportunity to actually shoot through. And of course it also masks the flare of the sun uh, on your lens, which I'm, of course I'm sure you've actually struggled to actually uh, to hide or mask uh, over the years. So what's happening in this particular shot, as you'd appreciate, the sun's hitting the back of her head. It's shining on the reflector over here and then coming back on her face. Now let's look at the before and after example in this next example there. So this shot is without the Omega Reflector. This is a beautiful girl, but a, a beautiful girl in poor light uh, doesn't shine as bright as you'd appreciate. Now looking at the shot on the right hand side, the sun hits her uh, back of her head, beautiful hair and rim light, hits the, the, the reflector back on her face, gorgeous catch lights in the eyes that make the eyes pop, and it just gives you this beautiful beauty lighting. Now guys, this is not a 
uh, a lighting product that's going to solve all your problems. This, I would simply say it's this. It's a traditional reflector that you can use in any way. You know what a five-in-one is, right? A five-in-one is normally where it's a black side on one side, white side on the other. Uh, then you inverse it. You've got gold and silver. And then internally, uh, you have the uh, translucent diffuser where light travels through, but you can't see through it. So it's, it's exactly that. Plus, the fact is that we get five more options to be able to shoot through it and get that non-descriptive beauty lighting. So the extra element that we've added with this particular product is, like I said, you get this beautiful, soft, gorgeous lighting that's very quick and easy and very transportable and portable uh, and you can take with you on location. And let me show you a few more things that you may want to look at. Now, guys, let me show you something here. Now, what I've got here, just want to show you, uh, um, I'm actually showing you a, a raw file. This is straight from the camera. I've deliberately shot this girl deliberately to not be that flattering. Uh, this is overcast lighting, so the lighting is, is basically, uh, you would say it's one big softbox, but there is a direction. As you'd appreciate, you can see that the sun is behind the clouds there, of course, and it's coming from the top. You can see evidence of that because the lighting is coming on her forehead on her cheekbones, uh, cheekbones and her nose. So really it's an unflattering quality of light. I don't know about you, but I've seen a huge trend over the last year or two for that uh, many of the new generation are actually backlighting everything. And that's totally okay. As long as in my opinion, there is a direction of light or, 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 or an iridescence of the skin or a saturation of the skin from the front. Because backlighting is one thing, but backlighting and beautiful front light uh, is another. So like I said, you are looking at a raw file. If you look at the texture of her skin, um, this is a beautiful girl, Devin, one of our closest friends. Um, but you can see how you can see the, um, you know, the skin texture and so on. Now, let's now show you a behind the scenes image. So as you'd appreciate, being a raw file, as you can see there, um, the lighting is basically hitting the reflector back on her and it gives us a perfect position to shoot her. Um, and this is the result, straight out of camera, no Photoshop, not even a JPEG exported from Lightroom that's corrected. This is a raw file, and you can see now the difference between that one and that one previously. In fact, let, let me put them side by side. So side by side, you can see it's a huge difference. These are raw files, left-hand side, uh, no Omega Reflector right-hand side with the Omega Reflector. Let's zoom them up a little bit. And you'll see the difference. And it, I, I struggle to find any other quicker and easier, more effective and more affordable way to get that kind of lighting sort of straight out of the camera. Like I said, guys, this is not going to be the answer to all your lighting needs, but it'll certainly answer a lot of them in a lot of different ways. All right, let's have a look at another girl here. Okay, so here we see, again, this is a raw file taken straight out of the camera. Beautiful girl, but the lighting is pretty poor. You know, you'd see that there's a shadow on it underneath her eyes there. The light is a bit uneven on her face, but there's some beautiful backlight and hair light there. Fantastic, no problem. So let's look at the behind the scenes shot here. Again, this is a raw file that you're seeing. Now straight away, you can see her skin just glow and pop. It looks amazing. And then we see the after shot and huge difference. Let's go closer to the skin so you can see what's going on. Look at the catch lights in her eyes. Um, the roundness of the corners of the, uh, of the Omega Reflector, you would say soften the nature that it's square and it mirrors somewhat the, 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 the roundness of her eyes. So it really brings attention to the pupil of the eye. It surrounds the, the, uh, the, the, the pupil. It, it's, uh, it just really brings attention to those, to that, to those eyes. I love, the, I love the eyes, it's beautiful. All right, so let's keep on going. Let's show you some more examples here to show you what we're talking about. This shot again, guys, this is actually a raw file. This is straight out of camera. What I did was I shot this recently in, um, during my How to Wow tour that some of you may have attended uh, in the US. And what's happened here is I've actually put some Christmas lights or fairy lights as we call them in Australia in the background for a bit of ambience, exposed for that ambience. And then we've added a speed light behind her. The speed light... Uh, gives her that beautiful little glow around the edges of her hair, hits the reflector, back, bounces back on her face, again, for a very nondescript beauty lighting, which um, I think is great. So, all right. Now, now, let me sort of show you a few more ways to, to use this particular uh, reflector. So, 
it's not limited to using it in the speed light or outdoors in the sun. It's in many different ways. Now, Lisa, again, um, uh, as you may have uh, seen her just there before, um, I actually noticed sunlight coming right through a, a hotel hallway. So I grabbed Lisa, brought her down on the carpet there. The sunlight hits the reflector, then goes back on her face. And as you can see, we've got beautiful, gorgeous uh, catch lights in the eyes and nondescript lighting there as well. Uh, and as you can see, without the reflector, it's just, it's just nothing. You just wouldn't photograph there. So let me show you some more examples here. So this one here is just using ordinary uh, window light. So as you can see on uh, this particular section, we've got beautiful hair light here, rim light here, beautiful. Um, but her face, there's nothing going on. Now you could fix it up afterwards in Photoshop. You can spend time bringing up some catch lights in the eyes. You can spend time dodging and burning her face. Um, but with the Omega Reflector, all of a sudden there's this beautiful glow as you can see on her face, gorgeous catch lights. And then we have the behind the scenes photograph straight out of the camera for you to see exactly uh, the difference between uh, with the reflector or without it. All right, let's move on to another example. So here I photographed this girl in open shade. As you know, open shade offers a very cool, sort of unflattering quality of light. There's really not much direction of light. So what I simply did here is in my outdoor studio in my home in LA, I got a speed light, uh, the Nikon Speedlight 910, and then I bounced the speed light off the reflector back on her, giving us a beautiful hair light, and then gorgeous front light, and you can even see from this far away how amazing those, the eyes pop. So look at the difference between that quality of light on the right and on the left. Um, and it's, it's, it's amazing. Like I said, and if, if perhaps you're doubting whether this is valid because maybe the image on the, on the right hand side has been retouched, I show you those raw files straight from the camera before, um, and it's, it's incredible. Quite simply, it just gives you, it brings you closer to the end product than, um, than perhaps without using it or, or in different ways. You know, if you, if you love beauty lighting and you want gorgeous quality of light, less descriptive, this is the reflector for you. If you want a normal reflector, then use it as a normal reflector as well. So it is all beautiful. Okay, guys, here's another example. So what I did was I, if people ask me all the time, can, can we shoot a fuller body or a full length? Well, quite simply, it depends. Um, if you go closer to the hole with a wider angle lens, certainly, as you can see, you can uh, photograph in uh, you know three quarter or full length, but you need the sweet spot of light to hit the reflector back on her. Here, what I've got is, of course, this shot on the top left-hand side, there is no reflector at all. It's ambient light. You might ask you, what, is those, what are those horrible shadows on the wall? That's actually just the, the ambient uh, uh, sort of chandelier light that's causing those shadows there. That's part of the effect and the ambience of that light. So here now, we've got the speed light, bounces off the reflector back on her, and as you can see, you get that beautiful lighting with less shadows, and, and it works really well. Typically, guys, I actually personally love dramatic shadows. I love the idea of drama and adding sort of highlights and shadows to my images that gives it depth. But this is a different quality of light. This is a, this is a beauty light. This is, again, like I said, a, a combining the nature of the traditional reflector with a ring flash and a beauty dish. All right, let's look at this next example. So I'm sure if you've ever used speed light, and I'm sure you have, you will often underexpose the sky and then add your flash, and then you underexpose the ambience. It keeps your attention on the person. So this image here on the top left-hand side is just photographing uh, this girl with nothing, no, no, uh, just normal, flat, overcast lighting, and the sun's gone behind the clouds there, and that's basically it. What I've done here is I've underexposed the sky, uh, underexposed my background, so you can see how the part of the trees where I was photographing into there um, have just gone darker, and then I've got the speed light there behind her, giving her a beautiful hair light, hitting the reflector in the back on her, and again, for a very less descriptive beauty lighting. Let me show you a few more examples here. Now, guys, really excited. I know this sounds really funny, but um, I believe this is also the first reflector ever to include a suction cup. Um, if you're anything like me, sometimes I shoot in receptions or homes where it's all glass or all mirrors. Now, if you've ever bounced a, a flash off, a off an actual window or a mirror, you know that it actually just looks horrible. So quite simply, put the suction cup on the window, then you have something to bounce off. Or, in this case, if you um, have the sun shining through a window and it's just really harsh and you want to soften it and make, create that window to be a softbox, rather than have your assistant hold it, suction cup this, uh, 
the suction cup there on the on the glass, and now you have this big softbox, this beautiful diffuse glow of light on her face, and it works really well. Some people have been told me, fantastic, now I have a hook or a suction cup, I can hang the dress, because I want to do a detail shot of the dress, and I can hang it on, on the glass window. And of course you can do that as well, so fantastic. Now, if you want to basically take all the holes out of it, as in take the Velcro panels off the reflector, the three panels, now you can create shafts of light with it. This is just one example, of course, but you can imagine with the angle of the sun and the angle of the reflector, you can get incredible little shafts of light where you can do pretty much anything you want to. So here we have um, an example that I showed you a bit earlier, perhaps a bit more of a behind the scenes detail of this. So I found some Christmas lights or some fairy lights in my, uh, in my environment. This shot here was shot at about 12,800 eyes, so just so you can see what the quality of light was on her. Then we put one speed light behind her. It gives us that beautiful hair light, hits the reflector back on her face, and then now we get that gorgeous lighting as well. By the way, before I forget, just so you know, the reflector also comes with a strap. I don't know about you, but when I've used a reflector in the past, it's, I've had to hold the reflector between my legs, underneath my chin, underneath my armpit. It comes with a loop, of course, like it, all reflectors do, but I simply also added a, uh, a strap to the reflector, so it actually really works well. If you're anything like me, guys, I'm sure you've used your diffuser, your, in, your panel inside your 5-in-1 reflector there, um, the, the, the one-stop diffusion panel diffuser as a somewhat of a softbox where you can shine a speed light through it and then it just becomes this softbox. If you want a smaller, smaller window per se, put the black side on the, uh, um, around the reflector and then you have this smaller panel to shoot through, not, not shoot through, pardon me, where the light actually illuminates through and now it's a bit more dramatic. So think of it like photographing with a small window light as opposed to a bigger window light. Um, and there's so many different combinations that you can use with this reflector as well. Now, guys, of course, you can use it as a normal reflector. You know, just keep the panels on, Velcro them on. And, of course, this is just using window light, um, as you can see here. And this is just shining the ref uh, This is no reflector. This is just using ordinary window light coming right through. And now we have the behind the scenes. This is using the silver side if you want something a bit sharper and contrastier. Sunlight side if you want something warmer. By the way, most reflectors come with a gold side. If it's anything like me, the gold side I never use because it's just simply too gold, too warm, and it makes all your subjects look like Oompa Loompas. <laughs> so uh, we've made it sunlight. Um, we call it sunlight. It's a combination of silver and, and, um, and gold, so it gives you this beautiful, soft, warm glow without being too warm. This is using the white side. And of course, this is using the black side. So people are often ask me, guys, what, what do I use the black side of a reflector for? Of course, a black side doesn't reflect. It cuts away light. People call it a gobo or a cutter. Um, for in layman's terms, I call it a cutter. It cuts away the light. So you can compare the difference between this shot on the bottom right and this one on the top left. It cuts away the light reflecting off the opposing wall and back on her face for a more dramatic, uh, dense shadows um, and uh, it gives you a lot of depth, which I love as well. So, All right, let's look at this example. This is using the cutter outdoors. So this is without the cutter. So basically, this is just light bouncing off this wall, in fact, giving, the, giving you sort of a nice sort of warm glow. But then I've got the reflector that cuts away light, giving you a more dramatic quality, and it just offers more of a direction of light. You almost feel the lighting is coming from this direction now, um, which, of course, it is because we're cutting away the light from this particular side. Also, guys, have you ever wanted to photograph through a, a piece of reflective glass or something, and then all you're seeing is this horrible, you know, this horrible re reflection off a car? So what we simply do is this: um, you you block out the light, the reflection, um, in the direction of where the light's coming from. There. So, in other words, if I'm shooting in this particular way, all I'm seeing is what's happening on the other side. If you draw that sort of that, that, that little angle there, if I cut away that reflection, now I see vividly through that piece of glass. Now guys, this is nothing innovative. Um, you can use a black jacket, you can use your existing reflector. I'm just showing you many ways that you can use a normal reflector in case anyone listening out there is perhaps less experienced or, or doesn't really know how to use a reflector. All right, guys. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that little mini tutorial, I guess. Uh, remember, it is a reflector. It's portable. It's 44 inches in its, uh, in its length. 
and um, it's in fact 40, 45 inches part of me um, by 38 inches and it just gives you that beautiful quality of light. I really hope you enjoy it and uh, if you have some examples jump on the Facebook page, the Omega Reflector Facebook page and share your photographs and give us um, give your fellow photographers and other peers many many ideas on how to use the reflector. Enjoy guys, thank you.